morning. I don't know if I'm the only person, but when I first became a believer 20 years ago, the Holy Spirit was just kind of out there in my mind as this, I knew he was a person, but I wasn't quite sure where he fit and how that worked and, and all of that. So, time me hope because you said 10 minutes. <laughs> Okay. And I want to honor that. So, uh, 2017, I got a prompting to write a book. I'm no author, I'm a grammar nerd, but an author, no, not me. And I, I got this prompting and I just kind of blew it off like, okay, that was weird and just kept on about my life. And I was speaking to a friend in February of this year, and there was something that she said, and just like that, it brought the idea of a book back to mind and with a sense of urgency. I don't remember what she said. She doesn't remember what she said, but whatever it was, it was a Holy Spirit, a God-ordained word for me in that moment. And so, mom with a high schooler, uh, well, I'm sorry, two middle schoolers at the time, lots of activities after school, I'm involved in church, I teach fitness classes, I'm going, how in the world am I supposed to get this done? I serve on the praise team at my church as well. How am I gonna get all of this done? But Lord, I know it was you speaking. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get it done. And so the Lord would wake me up during the night. I could sleep through anything. A truck could go through the room and I don't hear it unless it hit me. I, don't, I, I wouldn't hear it. But the Holy Spirit would wake me up either early, early in the morning or I would be up late at night just going and going. And these ideas kept coming. And he began to show me there are people, I'm like, I don't even know where to get started on writing a book. He said, there are people you know who are authors. Ask those people, and those people belong to me. So I began to ask questions like, how did you do this, and how did you do this? And I just started writing. It's my own story, so it wasn't a matter of the content, but more how to structure it in a way that would be easy for someone to read and just feel like it was relatable to them and not just this, you know, you need to eat right and you need to exercise. Who doesn't know that? <laughs> I knew that for years. Knowing and doing are not the same. So fast forward, let's see, that was early February of 2018. The book was published March the 14th of this year. I took a break from the praise team. Let me tell you the legalistic battle going on in this mind. Oh my goodness, I'm serving the Lord at church and uh, and I'm saying I need to take a break from that to be able to do this. If I believe that idea came to me from the Holy Spirit, it's my job to get busy. I already blew it off once. Didn't know if that opportunity would come again, but it did. So praise team, I love y'all, be back in a minute, but right now I need to get this done. There are other people who can serve, he always provides. The team went on and life was wonderful. <laughs> but my sacrifice, if you will, to serve on the team, what Trump sacrifice? Obedience. Obedience, it does. And so in my obedience, to serve God, I now have a tangible, tangible product in my hand that can serve as a legacy for my children. It's already serving as a legacy, just what they're watching my health transform as I learned. It doesn't have to be all or nothing with my health. I started uh, experience, experiencing health issues at age 45. I didn't want to be on blood pressure medication for the rest of my life like the doctor said I would have to be. I said, Lord, there's got to be a way to do this 
without being on meds for the rest of my life. I personally did not want that. I had seen too many people in my family, and I knew that there were some changes that I needed to make. I just wasn't quite sure how to make it. Who hasn't tried a diet, a quick fix, a pill? Am I the only one? I know I'm not the only one. Well, I wasn't trying to lose weight, so I'm like, I don't need to be on a diet. I just, why is my blood pressure all of a sudden 188 over, uh, 188 over 100? That's not good. I was leading a very sedentary lifestyle, started going to the gym and making some changes, but my diet still was not in order. But God placed someone in my path at the gym to show me how to eat and how to make a healthy lifestyle sustainable. Now I have a book in hand to use to encourage other people, especially in the house of God. Y'all know we don't talk about that. We don't talk about um, our health at church unless someone needs a prayer request because they're sick or they're not feeling well. When we hear from the pulpit, We'll hear about all kinds of sins, normally sexual. Who talks about gluttony? Who talks about self-control? Nobody. Somebody had better start talking about it. There are so many of us who are dealing with illnesses and things God never intended for us to deal with. But here we are. And we can make a change. We can change what we don't like. He gives us the power to do that. Sometimes it involves meds. I personally didn't want to. That was my conviction. So I had to do some things differently. I had to make some changes. That was four years ago. I'm 50 years old, God willing, I'll be 51 on Sunday with my birthday buddy, Charlotte. <laughs> I don't wanna look 50 years old. I don't look 50 years young. I want to be an example for my children. I don't want them to be 45 years old before they learn how to eat. Okay? So as they've seen me change my habits, they're changing theirs. And just like mine didn't change overnight, I can't expect that theirs will. So, here I am, by the grace of God, led by the Holy Spirit, and now God is opening door after door after door, and I'm trusting him in obedience. Things are uncomfortable. I don't normally speak to <laughs> a group of ladies, yet this was a door that he opened this morning through hope. Like she said, just conversation at the gym. Hadn't seen her in a long time, but here I am honoring God with what he's told me to do. There's nothing I have that he didn't give to me. He's the one who's opening doors. The Holy Spirit is the one who is opening doors in this area. Do you have a book in you? Is there a business that you're supposed to start? Maybe a nonprofit? Is there a product in you? You could be the next person on Shark Tank. Who knows? But there's something he's given all of us. Something my husband tells me. I used to say, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And my husband corrected me in love, of course. <laughs> he said, what's the first thing God did? He created. And whose image, in whose image are we made? So we have creative bones in our bodies, but it's up to us to use them, yes? And so I'll just say this quickly. Um, in writing this book, it was a much easier process than I ever thought. It's on Amazon, in paperback and Kindle. It's now on Barnes and Noble, in paperback and, and Nookbook, I think they call it Nookbook. That's a God thing. But what does it say about faith and works in James? 
Faith without works is without works. I prayed for years, Lord, I don't want migraines anymore. 35 plus years. Why does my skin still look like I'm a teenager with all this awful acne on my face? I don't want this. Prayed and prayed and prayed for years. Nothing. And then, then I go down my Levitical checklist. Well, maybe there's some sin somewhere that I didn't confess. I don't know. God's not answering my prayer. And one day the Holy Spirit, hey, I'm always faithful to do my part. What are you going to do? Because faith without works is dead. So again, he's using my story to bring honor to him in a tangible, practical way. Not just floating around in the third heavens. We're not of this world, but we're still here. So we had better learn, like Paul talked about, becoming all things to all men. So by that, some might be saved. People don't understand third heaven. People who are not yet born again Christians, they don't understand that. If Jesus didn't have work for us to do, he would have raptured us, right? After he saved us, there is a work to be done. God left us here to impact and influence the world for his glory that his kingdom may be advanced. So we, I'll say me, need to get off my butt and get busy. And so um, I'll say this as well. My book's been nominated for a Christian Literary Award. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> Again, to him be all the glory. Whether I win or not, I don't know. The other people in the category with me, I know they want to win too. I want to win. <laughs> but whether I win or not, just, the, just having the honor of being nominated is a blessing. And just seeing that God is using this to help people change their thinking. Society sells us this quick fix. If you take this pill, if you do this for 10 minutes, if you drink this, if you eat that, and cut this out and cut that out and cut out the other, it doesn't have to be that way. But that's what we, that's one of the lies that we tend to believe. Been there. Been there. I used to run to the medicine cabinet as a first option. That's a last option at the McCray house. And again, that's not knocking anyone. I hope you don't hear that. Anyone who's on medication, I was for a short time until I saw it wasn't making a bit of difference. Why am I paying this every month? And heaven knows what it's doing to my body long term when I have control over what goes in this mouth. And I do. And some days it's a struggle. <laughs> and some days it's not. But like life, Hope and I talked about that earlier. Life has ebbs and flows. But it's balance. It's all about balance, how God wants to use us to honor him to be living, breathing models of what it looks like to be wives, mothers, ladies, friends, sisters, you name it. What does it look like to walk through a difficulty and come out on the other side and that he's going to use that? He's going to use it for somebody else who's what? In a difficulty? Similar thing. How can we speak to that if we hadn't walked through it? How can we effectively, I'll say that, effectively speak to it if we haven't walked through it? So anyway, I'm not sure. Hope hadn't raised the red flag. <laughs> thank you again for the opportunity to be here and thank you for your attention. Now, if y'all don't mind voting, I have some cards back there with the information. So <laughs> thanks so much for your time and attention. y'all.